Welcome to another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Rick George. Today, we're gonna cover maze drilling. We're gonna cover blacking a fireman out, and we're gonna cover more in depth about why vision is so important for firemen. As you can see, we've got a firefighter that's gonna be going through this entanglement drill right here, and the dress that he has on may be unusual for you. The first time that we send somebody in that's not comfortable is in their day uniform. And the reason we want them to go through in their day uniform is to get accustomed to being able to be successful in accomplishing the task that we're putting in before them. This drill is done in four different steps. The first step is the one that you're going to see right now. Firefighter is going to be going through the entanglement and he's going to be going through in his day uniform. He's only got gloves on to keep his hands from getting cut on the wires. As he goes through, he learns a technique of keeping his back in the corner. All the technique is sound, everything he was taught in the recruit academy. Everything he was taught when he was hired by your department and put through the academy there. Now, it doesn't look like much of a challenge, but if you're visually challenged and you've had some trauma prior to that and you start to get a little sketchy, so you go straight from anxiety to panic, He's going to look incompetent, but the only incompetency is not the fireman. It's the instructor that can't pick it up and know how to deal with it. So we're going to show you some techniques on how to deal with that. After it's been established that the firefighter is comfortable going through there in just his day uniform, we now move it up a notch. We put him in his full turnout gear, and then we have him run through the, through the entanglement with his turnout gear on. There's no SCBA. It's just his turnout gear. We make sure his technique is right and coach him through it if he needs it. The whole time you're watching to see if he gives any clues that he's struggling, because if he's struggling, this is the area that we need to concentrate on. The next step that we're going through is the firefighter's got his SCBA pack on. Now he's going through and we're slowly increasing the degree of difficulty of the drill. He follows the exact same techniques, and what we're doing is we're reinforcing the drill, but we're also gaining confidence through this. Some people are weaker than others. This isn't a drill for everybody. This is a drill for people that are having troubles and struggling when you black them out or when they're going through tight places. So now that we've established that the firefighter is comfortable and he's, be, he's been gaining confidence all through this course because we've been increasing the degree of difficulty, we try not to make it one of those things where we are breaking him down. We want him to be successful. So now we've got him on air. He's following the exact same techniques to where he's coming through and we're reinforcing the techniques, coaching him through the drill until he becomes successful at coming through. You can always increase the degree of difficulty in a drill. This isn't a drill that's for every firefighter. Some firefighters are more comfortable than others doing this. This is a drill for the instructor as much as it is for the firefighter. The instructor's got to be able to see the ones that are having problems. Because they're having problems doesn't mean that they're weak candidates. It just means that these senses happen to be the weakest on them. So after they've established their degree of, of confidence, now we can start to increase the difficulty more and more, and we're comfortable that this person isn't gonna go from anxiety to panic. And as we increase the degree of difficulty, we gain mastery. Okay, so some of the pieces that may not be making sense to you is, why go through the painstaking steps that I've just shown here? Why don't we just throw them in there and have them do it? That may work for 75, 80% of the people that are out there. It's not gonna work for the others. And the reason it's not gonna work is because 70% of the neurotransmitters are, are based in the eyes. That means that when your vision is taken away, you're left with 30% neurotransmitters for the rest of your senses. We have to develop those senses. And it's, in, it's important for instructors to be able to recognize that so that they can see it in their students. Now. If we took our fingers and we clasp our hands like this and put them behind our heads, that's how much of the brain is used just for the sense of vision. That's why vision is the most dominant sense. That's why vision has to be given certain considerations when you're in training. And that's why instructors have to understand the implications of some people when they go from anxiety to panic. 
Sometimes it can be more than just a vision problem. It can be signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. Thanks for watching another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Rick George.